I mean, David, I'm, I'm trying to think of a polite term to use on, on your channel. I mean, that, it's pathetic, actually. It's a man completely out of his depth with no idea what's going on in the country. As violent anarchy grips many parts of South Africa, questions have to be asked about the state's ability to have foreseen these events. Well, we at the Center for Risk Analysis over the last 18 months or so have been flagging to our clients in our weekly risk alerts the risk of violent anarchy overtaking South Africa, whilst many other analysts have been speaking in very praising terms about the so-called new dawn. Joining me to discuss this topic is Franz Cronier of the Center for Risk Analysis. Franz, what is your read of the events that have unfolded over the past few days? David, hi. Yeah, predictable set of events. I asked some of our analysts yesterday to go through the notes we send to clients on Monday morning. And uh, over the past two years, we've with great regularity flagged the specific risk of violent anarchic protest action breaking out. So we could see it coming. I spoke to a former intelligence officer this morning. He said he's astounded that the state missed this completely. So perfectly predictable, was predicted, and uh, played out exactly as some of our notes suggested that it would. So Franz, do you think that the government anticipated these events? No, it didn't. It's extraordinary, David. They didn't see it. Uh, they didn't cover some of the hot spots, such as the Moy River Toll Plaza. I mean, that's a known hot spot. Uh, the military deployment happened only after things blew up. Uh, police leave in Natal was only cancelled after things had blown up. No, I don't. I think they walked straight into this thing and uh, were surprised by it and uh, did not see it coming. Enjoying this analysis? Click here to sign up for our 30 day free trial for more content from the CIA. But, France, as we often note in our risk alerts, uh, South Africa is already very prone and vulnerable to violent protests. Uh, we've seen obviously a surge this week, but uh, this is not uncommon uh, in day-to-day -day life in South Africa. No, no, I've been telling clients this morning and yesterday evening who've been calling me that this is not a new strategic environment. South Africa on a normal day of the week sees very high levels of violent anarchic style protest action. This is simply a spike off those already very high levels of protest action. It's not the first time it's happened. It's happened uh, back through time. The xenophobic uh, riots are a very good case study of how it plays out. So no, nothing is fundamentally different in South Africa this morning. We're just seeing for a time, before it abates again, a higher intensity of the kind of violent anarchic protest action that's in fact become so commonplace that it really makes the headlines in the country. And Franz, what do you think are the driving factors behind this recent spate of violence? It's elementary. I mean, it's the most obvious analysis you can do. Half of young people in the country do not have a job. Real per capita GDP has not moved much over a period of more than a decade. South Africa's schools fail to prepare a significant majority of young people to be gainfully employed in the country's economy, let alone ascend to the middle classes. Rampant corruption plays out across all three spheres of government, especially at local government level. And on policy reform, there is nothing on corruption, there is nothing on education, and there's nothing in the labor market that can change those macro trends. And if you're going to be a country with these very high levels of inequality and these very high tensions and a government that is simply completely detached from that reality, a detachment born out again in what we've said earlier, that they missed this, they didn't see it coming, um, then no, it's inevitable. It cannot be otherwise. You have to see very high levels of violent protest action as frustrated people take to the streets and say, basically say, we hear us, see us, our lives are terrible, and we do not believe, we do not have the confidence that anything substantive is being done by the state to address that. 
this from an from an analytical perspective this stuff is straightforward and easy to do and how do you see the imprisonment of jacob zuma as a factor in all of this well once you create a context such as the one that that we have now these very high levels of youth unemployment these very high levels of exclusion these failing schools uh, uh and it's completely fraudulent anti-corruption drives and campaigns that that target for the media one or two scapegoats but don't address the the deep rooted corruption that ordinary citizens are faced with every uh, day of the week then you've created a powder keg and if you have a powder keg you need a spark and you set it off and too many analysts focus too much on what the sparks are in this case it's been jacob zuma he's the spark for this but that's not because a great majority of people wish him to return to power or particularly fond of him or anything of the sort we know that we saw the polling ahead of nazrik we saw the extent to which mr ramaphosa was far more popular by by orders of magnitude to to the zuma administration what this uh, zuma influence on this is it's simply a, a, an inflection point around which popular frustration with the trajectory of the country are brought to the fore and those frustrations this is the critical point this anger this frustration this violence is on a par with what the country last saw in the 1980s and it comes 3 years into the term of office of what many observers still maintain is the great reformist administration that's going to set south africa right we've been saying that's wrong and what we've got in in this blow up is the strongest corroboration yet that our analysis on the reform prognosis out of the Ramaphosa administration is absolutely correct and we saw on monday evening mr ramaphosa address the nation on these security problems uh, what was your read of his response to the crisis i mean my read is the same as clients look we've been skeptical of mr ramaphosa from the get go but many of our clients weren't and some of the conversations i've had in the last uh, 24 hours are 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 i mean you you must find polite terms i mean the, the, the complete detachment and an inability to assign cause uh, to to effect within the country no introspection about what has brought this about uh, and and a a it's it's um i mean david i'm i'm trying to think of a polite term to use on on your channel i mean that it's pathetic actually it's a man completely out of his depth with no idea what's going on in the country no a sense of of the extent to which the policies that his administration has pressed since coming to office remember the the the, the, the ramaphosa administration that hikes minimum wage levels in the face of already massive youth unemployment i mean that is reckless then the drive for expropriation i mean the, the government maintains that its economic recovery strategy will be premised on an expropriation strategy i mean it's it's more ironic uh, uh, uh frankly uh, david and then to to press ahead uh, with the sort of racial nationalist rhetoric and the ratcheting up of of the race based empowerment criteria which anyone in 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 with the experience of the real south african economy knows is a conduit for corruption and tax on investment um i mean this is what the ramaphosa administration has brought to power and this blow up is the consequences of the policies of the present administration to the same extent if not more so than those of the predecessor in mr zuma and franz how do you see this process unfolding what is the end game here Yeah okay the 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 two risks we must now avoid as a country the first is that this thing follows the well established pattern that we've attracted in the in the many xenophobic pogroms that have swept south africa over the past decade and what happens there is a copycat effect that that the thing spreads from economic center to economic center until the the country broadly is racked in a period of 2 weeks or so a violent anarchy uh, some significant loss of life uh, damage to property and great damage to confidence that's the one risk to avoid now but the, we don't get the copycat effect outside of gauteng and natal second risk now is the second marikana 
that the deployment of the army, which is absolutely necessary, the police were overwhelmed uh, yesterday, uh, ran away in many cases where, where, where reports uh, reached me, simply turned and fled, often left, and this is amazing, uh, uh, civilian militias to maintain uh, orders. Even one uh, case will come out, I'm sure, in the media of where the police begged uh, uh, private uh, people for ammunition after they'd run out and wouldn't be resupplied by the logistics chain of the police seems to have broken down. So you, you, you now get this army deployment, and if that culminates in a second Marikana, then you have the context for a national uprising against the South African government. That now becomes plausible. If those two events, the xenophobic pogroms and the national uprising, can be avoided, then this thing calms over the next week. But it comes back to that same very high level of violent anarchic protest action that I mentioned to you earlier. It doesn't go back to, to peace. I mean, the, the government's speaking about a return to peace and law and order. There hasn't been that in South Africa for a great many years, and anyone who lives in the country appreciates that. It seems the only people that don't are the members of the cabinet who, who, not, who are not aware of this. We then get back to that status quo, which will in the absence of real reform, be interspersed on regular occasions with the kinds of blow-ups that we've seen now. And where that culminates goes, takes you back to an old 2014 Center for Risk Analysis call that the ANC's time in government in South Africa is reaching the end, and that a confluence then of violent protest and an election result that's my, been my call, remains my call, sees the ANC being removed from power by the end of this decade. Franz Cronier, thank you very much for sharing your analysis with us. The Centre for Risk Analysis will be hosting an exclusive client webinar later today. There are links in the description below to our 30-day free trial. So if you're not a client already of the CRA, you can join us for that trial period and you can access the webinar through that route. My name is David Ansara. This is the CRA. Until next time, take care.